first hour, the soul follows the divine will in all its acts to keep it company and to receive in itself the divine life. It follows that will in the creation of the heavens and of the sun. Jesus, my life, the beating of my poor heart, the breath of my little soul, the center of my intelligence. My littleness is engulfed in you and loses itself in you. As a tiny baby unable to take a step, I come close to you. I hold on to your hand and with you I enter into the unending light of your divine will. Thus it is that the Heavenly Father now pronounces the first fiat and releases so much light that we cannot see where it ends. O oh, my Jesus, let my soul receive all the virtue, the power, the holiness, and the light of your adorable fiat, so I may experience in me nothing other than its life alone. Enriched by its life, I will be able to embrace everything, compensate for everyone, and hold that fiat captive upon the earth, so it may return triumphantly and reign in the midst of creatures. Let me then, my love, wander in your will to follow all its acts. Oh, how beautiful it is to contemplate the supreme majesty who with a single fiat dots the azure sky with billions of stars that enchant us with their light. He pronounces another fiat and creates the sun. He says fiat again and creates the wind, the air, the sea, and all the elements with order and harmony that captivate the soul. My Jesus, my love, oh, I want to make my own all the love that your divine fiat had in creating the star-studded sky, so I may in turn spread out my sky of love in your omnipotent fiat. And so adorning all the sky with my love, I want to give my voice to every star, so it may repeat with me, Jesus, I love you. May your kingdom come quickly upon the earth. May perennial glory be given to your divine will. I praise and glorify your divine strength and your indestructible being, so they may strengthen creatures in doing good and dispose them to receive the kingdom of your will. My love, I continue my tour and arrive at the sun I consider you at the moment when your fiat gave off so much light from the bosom of divinity as to form the star of day, that celestial body meant to embrace the earth and all its inhabitants and to give each of them its own kiss of light and love. Through it, everything was meant to become beautiful, fruitful, colorful, embellished, and enriched. This, this sun was brought forth from your bosom by your fiat for my pure love. Therefore, I want to receive in myself all its light, its warmth, and all its effects, so I too may be able to offer you my sun to praise, glorify, and bless with it the everlasting light, its unquenchable love, your exquisite beauty, your infinite sweetness, your countless tastes. Yes, O oh Jesus, I want to embrace you with the same sunlight. I want to give you my ardent kisses with its warmth. I want to invigorate with my voice all its brilliance and all its effects to ask you, from the height of its heavenly sphere to the very bottom, where its rays reach down for the kingdom of your fiat. 
Are you not aware, my love, that your will would like to rend asunder the veils of light to come down and reign in the midst of creatures? And I, on the wings of the sun's brightness, come to beseech you to send quickly the kingdom of your fiat. From the center of the sun, I ask you to let your splendor descend into the hearts of men, to illuminate them with your grace and to bestow your love in order to burn away in them whatever does not belong to your will. Ah, yes, if your light lowers itself to their level, they will reflect the divine beauty. Hatred and bitterness will come to an end. Everyone will acquire your sweetness and the face of the earth will thus be renewed. How happy I am, my life, to be able to tell you a son you have given me and a son I give to you. I have a celestial body in my power that asks you for the kingdom of your fiat. Can you resist this great light that beseeches you? Therefore, O Jesus, make haste and be quick. The sun is your divine reporter. So let its light, my love, with its own sparkle, reveal to all creatures the kingdom of your fiat, its holiness, and its burning desire to have them bathed in it, so it may make them happy and holy. Brown's second hour, the soul follows the divine will in the creation of the sea and the wind. Jesus, my life, your fiat drives me on. Here I am now, considering the creation of the sea. What sound is this? I hear a continuous murmur, the symbol of your eternal motion that never stops. I enter into that infinite and ceaseless divine motion that gives life to everyone, and I make it my own to give it all to everyone, and to ask you on behalf of everyone for the kingdom of your will. See, O oh Jesus, with your fiat I am descending into the ocean abyss. Wherever I discern motion, life, or murmuring, I let out my incessant cry, I love you, I adore you, I thank you, I praise you, I glorify you. And investing with my voice the murmur of the sea, the darting of the fish, the waves now stormy then calm, I ask you urgently for the kingdom of your fiat. Don't you hear, O oh Jesus, that all the water drops with their murmuring like so many voices are saying, fiat, 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 that it seems the roaring waves want to open the bosom of the sea to let your will emerge. Your will that prevails over them and to enclose it within all creatures so they may let your divine fiat reign in them. In this sea I come to praise and to love, in your murmur, your ceaseless motion, in its heaving waves, the purity that knows no stain, in its grandeur, your grace, and your immensity that envelops everything, that hides everything. With these sentiments I ask you, O oh Jesus, to make your people fair-minded, 
strong and pure. Let them live hidden and immersed in your most holy will so that they may run in that very motion of yours from which they came. Jesus, my life, I now consider the wind with its cooling freshness, with its brute force and fury that demolishes things, lifts them up, and carries them off. I consider that wind in order to love, to praise, to glorify, and to bless the kingdom of your will in it. It sounds like it's groaning. Then it sounds like it's howling. It is the love of your divine will that groans in the wind and wants to be recognized. Aware that no one is listening, it howls. It speaks with mysterious voices because it wants to reign and because it demands its supremacy in the midst of creatures. With the sovereignty of your supreme will, make its kingdom come in the midst of creatures. Let it rule over them so no one will ever be able to resist it. Entice them with its freshness. Make use of its brute force and fury to demolish the human will in them, to raise them up and hold them captive in your will. Let everyone listen to your continued groans. If you see they are not listening to you, then howl. Speak loudly with your mysterious voices so that deafened by them, every person may surrender and acknowledge your holy will as their supreme master. So then, my love, I too am hastening on the wings of the wind to ask you by means of it for the arrival of the kingdom of your will with every draft of this wind, I want to bring to everyone its kiss, its caresses, and its captivating embraces. third hour, the soul follows the divine will. It flies over the entire earth and admires all created things. I fuse myself in the divine will, and I begin. Jesus, my heart and my life, all creation is steeped in your adorable will. Its acts are numberless in all created things. And I, in order to trace them better, am about to wander through the entire universe. I travel in the air, and in it I impress my I love you, to ask of you that creatures, in breathing, may absorb with the air the very life of your will that reigns in it. I want to praise, to glorify, and to seal with my I love you, the order and harmony of all creation, to bring to everyone the order and harmony of the kingdom of the divine will. I want to fly over the entire earth and impress my I love you on the small blade of grass, the little plants, on all the flowers, on the highest trees, on the mountain peaks and on the deepest steps, to ask of you that the kingdom of your fiat may extend everywhere. I want to enliven everything, to give my voice to all, so that all may say, may your will come to reign upon the earth. Listen, O oh Jesus, as I impress my words, I love you on the little bird that sings, warbles and trills, 
Together with that bird, I ask you for the kingdom of your fiat. I stamp my words, I love you, on the little lamb that bleats, on the turtle dove that mournfully coos. I ask you with the bleeding and the mournful cooing for the kingdom of your fiat. There is no living being I do not intend to permeate, so I may with everyone and without stopping repeat my refrain, Thy kingdom come. I want my Jesus to penetrate the very center of the earth and deposit there my heart, so with its own beat it may love you for everyone, give love to everyone, embrace everyone, and with everyone cry out, May your kingdom come, and may your will prevail. The Rounds, Prayer in the Divine Will of God, given by our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the Kingdom of the Divine Will, to the Servant of God, Luisa Picaretta, the Little Daughter of the Divine Will. Fourth hour, the soul goes to Eden and joins in God's festivity over the creation of man. I fuse myself in your will, and I begin. Jesus, my life, I feel your love drawing me to you to make my rounds, and your will calls me to unite myself to all of your acts. It seems that you are not happy if your little daughter is not united to the, all the acts of your will. Though I am incapable of doing anything, but you are pleased that I do them. So I repeat my refrain, I love you, I adore you, I bless you, and I thank you, and I continue my rounds. My soul transports itself into Eden and discovers you along with the Most Holy Trinity in the act of creating man, your most precious jewel, the most beautiful statue. With what love you fashion him, and as you fashion him, you gaze upon him, love him, and exclaim, how beautiful is this statue of mine. Your love then vehemently wells up, and no longer able to contain it, overflows and envelops man, in whom you have not yet infused life your most beautiful statue. You press him so tightly to your divine bosom, and breathing in him, you give him life and impart to him your own likeness. You fill him with so much love that this most precious jewel of yours, unable to contain such love, unleashes it from within himself to form his own seas of love to captivate you, his creator, with his love. With his huge waves of love, Adam, the created love, plunges himself into the creating love, whereby the creator and the creature vie in an exchanging of love adoration and glory. My love is captivated and contemplates this most solemn act of the creation of man. I hear your creative voice that incessantly exclaims, 
How beautiful is the statue we have fashioned. The echo of his love attracts and wounds us. His voice is so sweet and resounding. His embraces are so tender and strong. Oh, how delighted we are in having given him life. He will be our delight, our joy, our recreation. Oh, my Jesus, with loving astonishment, I unite myself to the very act in which your supreme majesty, overflowing with love, breathed into man your divine breath, infusing into him life and imparting to him your likeness, thereby making him heir of your divine fiat. I too wish to receive your creative breath. I too long to love you and adore you with the same perfection and holiness with which my first father Adam loved and adored you, though I am a lowly creature. I too wish to receive your seas of light and love so that I may form my own huge waves of captivating love that reaching up to your divine bosom enable me to plunge myself in the interminable sea of your love. In this way I will vie with you, my creator, in an exchange of love. I shall offer you my love in order to receive your own immense seas of love. And in these very seas of love, I will implore you, May your kingdom come and your fiat be known. I now enter into the unity of your will in that same unity of love that man, your precious jewel, possessed so that my will may be one with yours, one in love. In this unity of your will that embraces all things, my voice resounds in the sky. It permeates all creation, penetrates the deepest abyss, and calls and cries out, May the kingdom of your divine will come. May the kingdom of your divine will come. Fiat voluntas tua, on earth as it is in heaven. In Eden, there was unending rejoicing between the Creator and His creature. Man had become the divine recreation with whom God was at play, the joy and the greatest delight of the Heavenly Father. In the unity of the divine will that Adam possessed, he enjoyed primacy over all created things. In this unity of the divine will, I unite myself to innocent Adam's holiness, glory, adoration, thanksgiving, thoughts, gazes, words, works, and steps, and I make them my own to offer you the repetition of his acts. For in beholding in me the operation of your divine will that operated in Adam, you will grant me the grace of establishing your kingdom on earth. Everything was order and harmony. The sky, the stars, the sun, and the sea were honored to serve and obey his every nod. Adam was the smile and the joy of all creation. All things reminded him of his creator and God who was very attentive to him, saw that nothing was lacking to his complete happiness. Indeed, in seeing Adam alone, God wanted to redouble his happiness. He made him fall asleep in his arms. During that profound, ecstatic sleep, he removed a rib from him and made out of it a woman of his likeness and gave her to man as his companion. 
He did this for him to make his happiness full. Oh, how this first mother of all the living, Eve, who also remained in the unity of the divine will, vied with Adam in forming huge waves of captivating love from the seas of love that they possessed. They did so in order to plunge their own loving waves in God's interminable and captivating divine seas of love, so as to obtain from God yet greater seas of love and divine grace. In so doing, their own waves of love, rising up and gently falling, expanded their seas of love throughout creation. O oh, my Jesus, I immerse my poor soul in the unity of your divine will, and in Adam and Eve's own huge waves of love, who with so much love adored and glorified your adorable majesty, I shall never come out of these huge waves. By continuously remaining in them, I make them my own, and like my first parents, continuously impact the heavens, the sun, and the earth in order to place at the foot of your throne on high all the love, praise, glory, and adoration that was unleashed from your adorable bosom throughout all creation. Within these very captivating waves of love, I incessantly exclaim, Thy kingdom come, may thy will be known. Jesus, my love, how happy I am in this Garden of Eden. Here there are my first parents in whom I experience the power of the unity of your divine will that makes of their many acts one single act with their Creator. This unity places all of God's benefits at the human creature's disposal, whereby they are shared in common. Oh, my Jesus, I realize that your joy and bliss are also their joy and bliss. And I, the little daughter of your will, wish to begin my life anew in this unity of your will, along with my parents, Adam and Eve. In these seas of joy and bliss, I desire to establish my dwelling place and therefore my captivating waves of joy and bliss, which plunging themselves in your eternal seas, offer you greater joy and bliss. In this way, I will see you always pleased and always happy. Who is so great a God as our God? Thou art the God that dost wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Who is like unto the Lord most high, who filled the seas and formed the skies? Who Generation, his wonder 
mighty works of old, of Noah's flood, of Jericho, of taming mighty lions in the den, of Egypt's plagues, Goliath's end. Through every generation, His wonders are displayed, from forming all creation. Brown's Fifth Hour, Original Sin I fuse myself in your holy will, and I begin. In never wanting to leave this unity of your divine fiat, I follow step by step. Our first parents, in committing original sin, went out of this unity to their own great misfortune. In choosing to do their own will, they fell from the highest state of all joy and delights into the abyss of all miseries. In seeing the most beautiful creatures cast themselves out from within the will of their Creator, the heavens and the earth were shaken. All things were shaken to their foundation. And you, my adorable Majesty, Upon seeing this dear jewel and beautiful statue of yours that dwelt within your own will, rob you of the beauty, the joy, and the delight you experienced. You felt such great sorrow that your justice ignited against them. My Jesus, this is why I never want to leave this unity of your divine will. Instead, I wish to entreat you to grant us what our first parents had lost, 
so as to remove from them the dishonor impressed upon their foreheads on account of having done their own will and to maintain with you the joy, the bliss, and the delight you experienced in the early days of man's creation. I wish to impress upon you my kiss and offer you continuous reparation to assuage your sorrow that was so great that it ignited your justice. I wish to appease your justice by turning to the peace and light of the unity of your will, and in this way elicit from all creatures one outcry. May the kingdom of your fiat come. Restore to us the early days of creation. May all things experience anew the rejoicing, joy, and delight of the first harmony between God and man. I will not leave you, nor will I get down from your lap, unless you give me your word that you will restore to us the kingdom of your divine will. My Jesus in my life, O adorable Trinity, your little daughter will not leave you in sorrow. I will never leave the unity of your will. I promise and vow never to do my own will. On the contrary, I bind it to the foot of your throne, never to look at it again. And I offer you solemn and continuous reparation for Adam and Eve's withdrawal from your adorable will. In the unity of your will, I, who desire to acknowledge it, assimilate myself to you, sweetest life of mine. I unite myself to the thoughts of all souls, from the first thought of Adam to the last thought of the last creature on earth, in order to impress upon their thoughts my I love you, Jesus. And I offer you my reparation and glory whilst entreating you in every thought of theirs to establish on earth the kingdom of your divine will. May all intelligences understand what living in the will of God means and may all souls eagerly implore its reign and dominion. In the unity of your will, I unite myself to every look of every creature. I bilocate myself in every one of their words and seal my I love you, Jesus, and all of my acts of reparation so that I may obtain your kingdom. In the work, step, and heartbeat of every creature, I say to you, I love you. I offer reparation for all sins committed, and I implore the kingdom of your divine fiat. Rounds, Sixth Hour, Personages of the Old Testament In the unity of the divine will, I wish to requite you for all the love and glory that those who lived from the beginning of the world to the time of the great flood would have given you had they lived in this unity of your divine will. I make my flight in your will to redo all the acts of all of these souls. Therefore, I impress my I love you within the sacrifice of Abraham and in the obedience of Isaac to implore through these acts of sacrifice and obedience the kingdom of your divine will. In the unity of the divine fiat, I discover the sorrow of Jacob as well as the sorrow and joy of Joseph. And impressing my I love you, Jesus, within these I implore your kingdom. I continue my flight in the divine will 
and discover the power of the miracles of Moses, the strength of Samson, the holiness and patience of David. All reflections of the light your divine will had cast upon them, and I, impressing within them the seal of my I love you, Jesus, implore on behalf of all these personages the reign of your kingdom. Behold, my love, all the acts of your will that I have set out to redo in all creatures and have accomplished. I have done all this to entreat you by means of these very acts to make your fiat known, loved, and desired by all souls. Jesus, my life, I see that your loving will approaches souls more closely and casts the brilliance of its light upon the prophets and infuses in them the foreknowledge of your incarnation, revealing to them the time, the place, and the circumstances that will accompany it. And making my flight over each prophet and over each revelation that you share with them, I impress all of these with my I love you, I bless you, and I thank you, and I implore the kingdom of your divine will. Every promise you made and every revelation you manifested about your coming to earth was a commitment you made in which you bound the kingdom of your redemption to the kingdom of your divine will. So why, my love, do you not hasten its arrival? You never leave things half finished, nor do you bestow your riches only in part. So hurry. If through your redemption you bestowed on us your goods in half measure, now is the time to fulfill your work by making your will reign on earth. I, the little daughter of your will, shall not leave you, but I will reach the point of wearing you out. Only when I see your divine will reigning and exercising dominion over all creatures will my supplications cease. Come, divine will, to reign on earth as in heaven. Brown's Seventh Hour, The Blessed Virgin Mary I fuse myself in your holy will, and I begin. In never wanting to leave this unity of your divine fiat, I follow step by step. My love, I feel your love overflowing in me. You, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit, Lay aside your justice and prepare a new festivity, one that is perhaps greater than that of the creation of man. You issue forth your captivating oceans of power, wisdom, and love, of indescribable beauty. You then gather these oceans together as one within yourself, and from their very depths and with your creative word, you issue forth the life of the little queen. You create her so pure, immaculate, and with such enrapturing beauty that she captivates you who created her. With the conception of the immaculate queen, 
the festivities begin between heaven and earth. All creation rejoices and prostrates itself before her. All creation celebrates her as its queen, and I too prostrate myself before her, for whom the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit vie in enthralling her all the more with their oceans of power, wisdom, and love, and in taking greater pleasure in her. The three divine persons continuously outpour their love upon the newborn queen. They never cease from increasing the extension of their graces within her, so as to extend and augment her interminable seas of captivating love. The three divine persons behold in this heavenly creature the one who is to requite them and offer reparation on behalf of all and restore the glory of all creation. Therefore, while embracing her tightly on your paternal lap, you reveal to her the fall of man, how in rejecting his adorable will, he caused you so much sorrow. In her, you confide all things. And, O oh Jesus, how I tremble in this moment as I experience such sorrow in seeing your adorable will rejected, while admiring the heroism of the little newborn queen who gives her will over to you and pledges never to do her own will. She plunges herself in your fiat from which she draws life and which grants her dominion while establishing within the soul the first kingdom of your will. In her you hear her continuous refrain, May your kingdom of redemption come. May the divine word come to earth and may peace be established between the creator and the creature. Eternal Father, if you don't give me what I ask of you, I will never leave your lap. And she weeps to the point of wetting your paternal hands. Amidst smiles and prayers, she plunges herself within your own captivating waves of love, which you have given her. And by means of these waves, she requites you with the joy and bliss of your own will to conquer you in love and obtain from you the future Redeemer. Oh, how many stratagems of love my Heavenly Mother employs to win you over. She so enraptures you with her enchanting ways that you, my love, give in to her supplications and incessant yearning. The Rounds, Eighth Hour, The Soul Prays with Mary for God's Kingdom. I fuse myself in your holy will, and I begin. Jesus, my sweet life, please place my little soul, along with my holy Queen Mother, upon the lap of our Heavenly Father. There I will pray, weep, and yearn for the coming of the kingdom of your divine fiat. 
with my loving smiles, affectionate kisses, and adoration of the three divine persons, I wish to captivate them with the same captivating power of your own will to obtain from them your kingdom on earth. Or rather plunging myself within my mother's captivating seas of love, this little daughter of your divine will wishes to form her own little seas within the very seas of her mother in order to implore the kingdom of the divine will just as she implored the kingdom of redemption. Therefore, Holy Mother, lend your hand to your little daughter, and may you yourself make me cross the captivating sea of your love, so that I may place my unceasing, I love you, in your sea of love, and from within your sea of love, form my own sea. And by means of both of your seas of love and mine, we may implore together the kingdom of the divine fiat. I now enter into my mother's captivating sea of adoration toward her creator, and therein form my own little sea of adoration toward my creator to implore his kingdom on earth. I then make my flight into the seas of her prayers supplications and sighs, and therein form my own seas of prayers and supplications and sighs, to implore with prayers of the Heavenly Mother herself the kingdom of the divine fiat. My Holy Queen Mother, since your seas are interminable, grant your little daughter a space in your endless seas wherein she may place her own little axe. Wherefore, I entreat you with your own hands, place within the seas of your intense sorrows and pains, my little pains, from my long years in bed, from having deprived myself of things, and from my sacrifices, also from the most piercing pain of Jesus having repeatedly deprived me of his presence, which caused me continual deaths. My dear mother, may you unite all of these pains of mine and immerse them within the seas of your immense sorrow, so that they may form my little sea of sorrow. And by means of both your seas of sorrow and mine, I wish to unceasingly implore God to hasten the kingdom of his divine will on earth and make it triumphantly reign and exercise dominion over us. My dear mother, if you do not wish to make your little daughter unhappy, then say together with me that we possess only one love, one will, one operation, and one voice that exclaims, Fiat voluntas tua, on earth as in heaven. Just as your captivating seas compel the eternal word to descend from heaven to earth, where you offered your womb to receive him, so may these captivating seas of ours compel the supreme fiat to descend from his heavenly throne to earth, where I offer my soul to receive him. In this way, he will be conceived in my soul and establish his kingdom in me and through me in all other souls.
The Round's Ninth Hour, The Incarnation of the Eternal Word I fuse myself in your holy will, and I begin. My sovereign mother, I don't want to be without you, as I am incapable of doing anything on my own. May you unite all of your divine acts with mine, whereby they may become one, and we may together implore God to hasten on earth the kingdom of his divine will. Now, in the same divine fiat that you possess, I contemplate the moment of the conception of the word of God in your maternal womb. Within your maternal womb, I enliven all the acts I have accomplished within it. Along with my continual, I love you, and my little sorrows, so that when you conceive the Son of God, I may administer to him my acts along with yours and conceive him along with you. And by virtue of his great love that caused him to descend from heaven into the small prison of your womb, I entreat him to hasten on earth the kingdom of the divine will. My tender mother, I enclose myself within your womb to be with my little Jesus, to keep him company in his loneliness, to behold every one of his sorrows, and to impress upon them my I love you, I bless you, and I thank you. I see that my little infant Jesus begins to suffer as many agonies and deaths as there are rejections of his divine will on the part of souls. Through such rejections, souls deprive Jesus of the life his will seeks to impart to them, whereby it undergoes a death. And you, my Jesus, immediately wish to take upon yourself all of these deaths to offer satisfaction to the supreme will of the Most Holy Trinity. O oh, Jesus, you are now in the act of undergoing a death. My heart is crushed in seeing you so small and agonizing. So, my tender little child, I desire to offer you the divine fiat for as many lives as there are souls that choose to reject it. I desire to give death to my human will for as many times as there are souls who live according to their human will. I desire to make your divine will that you infuse in me one with you as it flows within your small humanity so that the agony and the pains of death that you endure may be less excruciating. And with your own divine will, I entreat you, may the life of your divine fiat flow within all souls. Oh, my sweet love, how many sorrows you endure in the womb of our Holy Queen Mother. There you remain motionless, for you haven't the slightest room to move, so much as one finger or one of your little feet. You have neither the slightest space to open your beautiful eyes, nor the least glimmer of light. But in this narrow prison of your mother's womb, there is only thick darkness. Ah, uh, all this makes me understand the many sorrows you endure, how souls have reduced your adorable will to inoperability. How souls who choose to turn a blind eye to your will can neither comprehend nor understand it. How souls who choose to operate without your will operate in thick darkness. My beloved little Jesus, I bring the life of your will into this narrow prison that constitutes your first dwelling place on earth in order to dispel the thick darkness in which you abide and herald in the light of day. I impress my kiss and my I love you upon your tender limbs. 
confined to immobility and ask you through the merits of your sorrows to make your divine will operate in souls with its light, dispel the night of the human will and form the perpetual day of your fiat. Beloved infant Jesus, if you do not allow yourself to be conquered by my supplications while you are yet a tiny child, and do not grant me the kingdom of your divine will, then tell me, when will you do so? My beloved child Jesus, don't you know that my soul desires to conquer you with your own love and with the power and strength of your own fiat? To attain my goal, I call to my aid all the acts of your divine will and surround you with them as a formidable army arrayed in battle to conquer you in love. I call on the sky with its myriads of stars and surround you with them. I call on the sun with the power of its light and heat. I call on the wind with its vehement force. I call on the sea with its roaring waves. In a word, I call on all creation. I unite myself with all the elements and empowering them with my voice. I impress upon them my I love you to obtain from you on everyone's behalf the kingdom of your divine fiat. My tender infant Jesus, do you not see the expressions of my love that I prepared for you upon exiting your mother's womb? I long to see you open your eyes to this world, to find yourself surrounded by the multitude of your own works, speaking with my voice as they say to you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I bless you, I thank you, and I adore you. With all of these works, I wish to impress my I love you, along with my first kiss upon your trembling infant lips, when you emerged from your heavenly mother's womb and took refuge in her arms. And in so doing, your heavenly mother presses you to her bosom, kisses you, keeps you warm, nourishes you with her milk and wipes away your tears. In my lowliness, I too desire to place myself in your mother's arms and infuse my kiss within the kiss she offers you. I make my I love you flow within her milk in such a way that as she nourishes you with her milk, I nourish you with my love. In a word, everything our mother does for you, I also wish to do for you. Do you see, my beloved infant Jesus, I am not alone, but am accompanied by all creation, the sun to warm you, and all things you created to dry your tears. So I unite myself to you as you cry and sob, because you do not feel loved. With my I love you, I love you, I sing to you a lullaby to help you sleep and in this way persuade you upon awakening to hasten on earth the kingdom of your divine fiat. My tender mother, come to my assistance. Let us say together to the divine infant Jesus, make this little daughter of yours happy by granting her the sole desire and longing of her heart, namely, that your will be known and reign on earth.
The Rounds, 10th Hour, Jesus' Circumcision. I fuse myself in your will, and I begin. My tender child, Jesus, I, I love you. I bless you and I thank you. Follow you everywhere to implore the reign of your divine fiat. In your every heartbeat and breath, in your tongue, in the pupil of your eyes, and in each drop of the blood from your little humanity, caused by your circumcision, I impress my I love you. I impress my kiss upon each one of your thoughts and upon the hands and arms of our Heavenly Mother and of Saint Joseph, so that you may feel my I love you when they hug you. I impress my I love you even upon the breath of the animals at your feet that keep you warm in silent adoration so that you may feel my love in their breath that implores the reign of your divine fiat. My delightful infant Jesus, I impress my I love you upon the pain you suffered with the cruel cut of your circumcision and in the first drops of the blood you shed to relieve your pain. I seal my I love you within each drop of blood you shed and within the tears that the sharp pain you experienced caused you, as well as within the tears shed by the Sovereign Queen and St. Joseph as they saw you endure such pain. Your blood, your pain, and your tears cry out for the triumph of your kingdom. My dear little Jesus, I press you to my heart to ease the pains of your wound, and I beseech you to enclose in your wound all human wills so that they may cause you no more sorrow. From your wound may your divine will emerge and establish its reign among us. The Round's 11th Hour, The Flight into Egypt I fuse myself in your will and I begin. My beloved child, while the wound of your circumcision is still bleeding, you experience yet another sorrow. A merciless and tyrannical man seeks your death, and thus you are forced to flee to Egypt to seek refuge. Such an episode symbolizes the obstinacy of the human will that persecutes your divine will and keeps it from reigning. My lovely child Jesus, may my words, I love you, make my affectionate kisses and my will flow within this sorrow of yours so that the human will may cause you no more sorrow. May the human will be reconciled and with and embrace your divine will, whereby they operate as one soul will. And out of grateful love for this sorrow of yours, may the human will implore your fiat. I now follow the steps of my mother as she carries you in her arms. As she walks, she weeps. And within her tears, I wish to comfort you with my I love you. Therefore, I impress my I love you step by step upon every grain of the soil and upon every blade of grass she walks upon. I make my voice resound within these elements so that as she walks, you may feel within her tears my I love you. I adore you, I bless you, and I thank you. And as you flee to Egypt in order to give me life, I offer my own life to defend yours and to implore the triumph of your will on earth. My love, as you flee, my heart breaks 
for I see you cry and bitterly weep from being sought after by those who seek you not to offer you shelter, but to kill you, to dry your tears with my love. I bilocate myself in all things of a created universe. To make you happy, I offer you my I love you, and I make it resound in the depths of the sea, in every drop of water, and in the darting of the fish. I wish to console your ears with the I love you of a mute fish of the sea, and with the most beautiful and loving music of my refrain, I desire your fiat. Within your will, I bilocate myself in the highest mountains and in the deepest valleys to call upon the plants, the flowers, and the trees, and have them all repeat with me, I love you, I love you. On the wings of the wind, I cry out with the most powerful voice, I love you, so that you may feel my love in the wind. In the wind, I send you my kisses and offer you my loving finesses. My beloved infant Jesus, as you make your flight to Egypt, day and night you are constantly in the open, exposed to the elements. Therefore, it is only fitting that I should call upon all the created elements for them to gladden their creator. And so I call upon the sunlight to cast its luminous rays upon your beautiful face and exclaim, I love you. I call upon all the birds of the air so that with their songs and trills, they may form lullabies of love for you. In a word, as I accompany you to Egypt, I wish to do so with a triumph of my love and I implore you with my refrain, May the kingdom of your divine will reign on earth. And I am not alone, O Jesus, but all the created elements are here with me. Are you not comforted by the beautiful sea, the wind, the sun, and the stars that exclaim, I love you, I love you? The sky, the mountains, and the plants all with one accord Cry out with full voice, I love you, I love you. I implore you to hasten on earth, the kingdom of your reigning and dominating will. This unanimous cry resounds in the heart of our Holy Queen Mother, who exclaims, My son, my love reunites all created things and restores to them harmony. It surpasses all things, and penetrating in the interior of your heart, implores your divine fiat. I fuse myself in your holy will, and I begin. The round's twelfth hour, the soul with Jesus in Egypt, it offers him its heart as a lodging and asks with the Queen of Heaven 
the kingdom of the divine will. My dear little baby Jesus, here you are arrived in Egypt, accompanied by sorrow and tears, by the thought of being completely forgotten, and by the abandonment of everyone. You are forced to enter into a small open shed, exposed to the wind and rain, because no one in the world has offered you a decent place to live. My love, I see that while you are crying from the pain that so much cruelty causes you, our mother hides her own tears to quiet your crying and to offer her beautiful soul as a perennial dwelling place for your divine will. I too want to join with her in drying your lovely face and impressing my I love you in your every tear. On your trembling lips, I place my loving kiss and asking you for your fiat. I offer my heart to your divine will as a perpetual habitation. My beloved infant Jesus, the center of my life, while you are residing in this small, rundown hut, I desire to follow all of your acts and those of the sovereign heavenly lady. When she rocks you in the cradle, I want to rock you also and help you go to sleep with the lullaby of my gentle, I love you, I love you. As she embroiders for you swaddling clothes in the thread that courses through her maternal fingers, I fuse my words, I love you. I bless you, I thank you, and I adore you, so that once our mother has dressed you, you may acknowledge that your clothes are interwoven also with my love that implores your divine fiat on earth. Heart of my heart, as you begin to take your first tottering steps, I impress my I love you on the ground beneath your little feet so that my love may extend itself beneath them. My heavenly infant Jesus, when you begin to walk on your own, though you are very small, you draw away from your mother to go to pray. You bend your little knees on the bare ground and with your open arms, pray and weep for the salvation of all, imploring with ardent sighs the reign of the kingdom of your divine will on earth. The 13th hour, the child Jesus with the children in Egypt. My heavenly infant Jesus, your love now moves you to go out where you meet the children of Egypt who drawn by your beauty gather around you You speak to them with such love, you leave them wrapped in wonder. My dear children, you know what this Heavenly Father wants from you? He only wants to be recognized within you as having his own place in the center of your souls. And since he gives you everything, there's nothing he does not give you. He only wants your love in everything you do. He only wants your love in everything you do. So love him. Let love be always in your little hearts, your lips, your works, and everything. And this will be the delicious food that you will give to his fatherhood. He loves you very much and only wants to be loved in return. I told him, give me your word that you will always Love the Heavenly Father. Say together with me, We love you, our Father, who art in heaven. And we love you, our Father, who dwells in our hearts. After instructing them, you bless them and hasten back to your mother because her love calls you. And upon seeing your mother, you run into her arms My love, I wish to follow you in everything. May my words, I love you, I adore you, I bless you and I thank you, resound beneath your gentle steps. 
in the gestures of your little hands, in your enrapturing words that are so full of sweetness, love, and life, and in your enrapturing gaze to implore the kingdom of your divine fiat on earth. And as you bless the children, bless this little child of your divine will also. And with this blessing, seal the life of your will in my soul. I follow you, divine infant Jesus, as you walk through the fields and take delight in picking flowers. Every time you reach out for one of them, I will repeat to you my refrain. I love you. I love you. I entreat you to offer our Heavenly Father the flower of my will so that I may know, love, and desire nothing but your holy and eternal fiat.